Hey everyone, this is Justin from Who Is Like You Ministries and welcome back to another video. Now this week I thought I would do a video continuing in my series of Is It Biblical? where I go through different Bible movies and test the biblical inaccuracies, see how close it is to the actual Bible story. This week I've decided to do Joseph, King of Dreams, which is a movie that's created by the same creators as The Prince of Egypt, which is the movie I did in my first video in this series, and if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. It's a really good one, and it's surprisingly close to the biblical story. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. But this week, I'm doing Joseph, King of Dreams, which is about the story of Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob, and one of the twelve tribes of Israel. I do want to just start by saying that this, I know that the quality as far as resolution is worse than my previous videos. This is actually the fifth time that I am recording this. I start, I was using a DSLR camera, which is what I've been using for all of my videos. And then it's just really hard to work with. It would get hot. It would shut off automatically after a certain amount of time. Sometimes the mouth movements would be off, I'd be recording the whole video, get 26 minutes in and then realize it hasn't been recording the whole time. I've tried using capture cards, which is what I'm using right now. I've tried just having it record and then using my Blue Yeti mic and kind of fixing up the audio in my video editor, but that's just really time consuming and a lot more difficult than it has to be. So I decided to go with my GoPro Hero 5 Black, which I know is a, a downgrade in video quality, but hopefully it works a little bit better. I'll try to get a more of a YouTube slash streaming camera later on. I know a lot of the streamers use Sony cameras. Maybe later on I'll get one of those, but for now I'm stuck with the GoPro. So I want to apologize in advance for the quality of this. So. Let's go ahead and get started with Joseph, King of Dreams. Is it biblical? Now, I do want to start off by saying before I look at this movie that I absolutely like with Prince of Egypt. I really love this movie. I think it is a very faithful adaptation to the story of Joseph. And surprisingly, it's actually closer to the biblical account than the Prince of Egypt was. Prince of Egypt was very close, and it does a lot of justice to the story of the Jews but there were some significant differences but joseph king of dreams actually is closer and it has less huge significant differences there are plenty of differences but as far as being close to the biblical account this movie is incredibly close and i think it the creators did a great job now to start i'm going to jump around the movie the first point I want to mention is with Joseph's two dreams he has at the beginning of the movie, and they happen at different times, so I'm just going to jump around and get both of those in just so I can talk about the first biblical difference.
So the first difference that I want to mention is with Joseph's dreams. They, there are some very significant differences between the Bible and the movie. In the movie, we see two dreams here. The first dream being when Joseph falls asleep, he dreams that he's following a lamb through a field of wheat and he's being chased by wolves and he comes across this ram that had been killed, presumably by the wolves. And then he wakes up. And this is signifying that Joseph has divine dream abilities to see the future and then later on he'll be able to interpret dreams. The second dream that he has in the movie is we see his brothers in a circle around him holding sheaves of wheat and then they bow down before him and then it transitions to a picture of all of the stars and the sun and the moon and they're also bowing down to Joseph. The difference is in the Bible the first dream never happened. The dream where he's chasing the lamb and finds a ram doesn't happen at all in the Bible. And this account that they're doing right now is coming from Genesis chapter 37. So it's not in the Bible. The second dream, however, is in the Bible. Now the difference is Joseph in the Bible has two dreams. The first dream that he has is when the brothers are laying the sheaves of wheat before him and it's symbolizing them bowing. And the second dream is all of the stars and the sun and the moon are bowing to him. So that's what he has in the Bible. The movie includes those dreams, just combines it into one dream, and it's the second dream. Whereas in the Bible, there are two separate dreams. So that's just one significant difference that the movie and the Bible do a little bit differently. Judah, Simeon, Levi, Reuben, where are you? Joseph is the fit to lead sheep. I agree. But he's our brother, half-brother. Said so himself. Judah is the one who should take over for father. Yes, but do you want a spoiled brat giving you orders? No. Can we all agree that something has to be done about Joseph? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I agree. Uh, hey, everybody. The little spy is back. I'm spying. I just Did wanted to... Did father tell you to check up on us? No. Us? Maybe this was a mistake. I, I just want to... Report on us to father? You're his favorite. No. You look at scrolls all day while we're covered in sweat. Why is that, Joseph? Is it because we don't have pretty coats like you? I have mine. Uh, uh. That's my coat! Step aside, brothers. I'm the new head of the family. Bow before me, you sheaves of wheat. Oh, yes, Master Joseph, ruler of the world. Give it back. Now, if you want your coat, why don't you go get it? Here's the guys got it. No, I don't. Judah does. says this is a game. <laughs> now the second difference that I want to mention is when Joseph goes and looks for his brothers. In the movie we see that he searches for them and he finds them in a canyon and they're in a circle deciding what they're going to do with Joseph. And then we see them, he confronts them, or I guess they find him and make him confront them. And, you know, they, they bully him a little bit and then end up pushing him in a pit. In the Bible, it's the events end up the same way, but the execution is a little different. In the Bible, Joseph goes and looks for his brothers and looks for them where they're supposed to be, and they're nowhere to be found. So he asks a nearby man if he had seen his brothers and the man says they're in Dotham which is a nearby city that's a couple kilometers away it's a major city and that's where Joseph finds them and that's where he gets thrown into a pit and then another difference is that in the movie we see that Judah is the main brother who's doing all of the talking he's he's the leader of the group everyone wants to bow down to him and not to Joseph, and he does all the talking and plays a huge part. In the Bible, it's a little bit different. Judah does still play a big part, but it's divided between another of the brothers, and that brother is Reuben. Now, I would say that the parts that they play are probably about 
I don't know, 40, 60, where Judah is the 60 and Reuben is the 40, but Reuben is still a very important character. In fact, in the Bible, when the brothers are all talking about what they're going to do to Joseph, they talk about just killing him outright. And Reuben is the one who stays their hand and convinces them not to kill him because his plan was to save Joseph and restore him to their father, which obviously doesn't happen because they end up throwing him in a pit. And actually, the Bible, it doesn't say it, but it makes it pretty clear that Reuben is not there when the event goes down. And on the next scene in the movie, I'll explain to you how I know that or why the Bible says that. I knew you'd come back. You think this is funny? Well, father won't be laughing when he hears... Who are you? Get him. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Ow. Let me go. You don't understand. I'm from the house of Jacob. A little scrawny, isn't he? It's hard to tell with that pretty coat on. No, 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 don't take my... Get up. Looks like he's never worked a day in his life. That'll change. <laughs> My brothers will come for me. Oh. Judah! Simeon! Levi! Please Joseph. help me! We're right here. Judah. Uh, uh. I told you they'd come for me. As agreed. 20 pieces of silver. Judah, why did he... No. Help me. Levi, please. Issachar, Simeon, stop them. Judah, Judah, help me, please. Please! gone too far. Ah! <laughs> I'm your brother! I'm your brother! With all the mishaps that I've had recording this video, I've had to watch this scene six, seven times, and it breaks my heart every single time. It's pretty accurate to the biblical account. Now, when Joseph is lifted out of the pit, the three men that we see that are slave traders are the Ishmaelites, who the brothers have sold Joseph to. And a difference from the Bible is that the, the role that Judah plays in this scene. So as we see that when Joseph starts getting tied up, they throw Judah the gold and give him the coat back. He refuses to even look in Joseph's direction. He won't even look him in the eye because of all the guilt that he has, and he wishes he could turn back, but they can't. In the Bible, though, this role more so goes to Reuben, who, as Joseph is being sold into slavery, is coming back and realizes what his brothers have done. And this is in Genesis 37, 20 through 22. He realizes what his brothers have done, and he tears his clothes out of grief and sadness. So, since Judah is the big player in the movie, all of the roles went to him, but in the Bible, all of that goes to Reuben. But that's just one minor difference. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it is similar to the Prince of Egypt, where the creators limit the role that Aaron has in the movie. In the same way, they're limiting the role that Reuben has in this movie. Another thing that's interesting to mention is that this movie skips the entirety of chapter 38, and it's understandable as it doesn't really have anything to do with Joseph and his story, but it's just about Judah and his family, his two sons and his daughter, and what happens with him. So I would definitely encourage you guys to read that. It's a very good read. And I do want to just mention one thing on that story. When you read it, you will read about things that may seem pretty intolerable or taboo or just pretty gross things. And I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying 
when you read things like that in the Bible, don't just write it off or say, you know, these are what the Bible writers are. The Bible is corrupt. God would never have this happen or things like that. Go ahead and research why these events happened and what they mean, who the event is happening to, and why is a woman doing this or why is a man doing this? Why did the author say that it happened this way? So just look into it and research these ideas before you go off and judge the Bible too soon. It's important to know all that you can about these before you make a judgment on it. Anyway, so let's continue with the story of Joseph when he is in Egypt. It's not what it seems. I could never betray you, master. Such insolence! Am I to believe a slave over my own wife? I swear, I did nothing to betray you. Silence! For what you have done, you must be put to death. See to it. No, no, master, I beg you. Tell him, help me, tell him that I... Uh, help me, please! Stop! He doesn't deserve to die. Why? I see. Take him to prison. <laughs> Wait, Master, no! Please, believe me, I, I did nothing wrong! Another difference between the movie and the Bible is with this scene right here where Joseph gets thrown in prison. Now the events leading up to it are almost exactly the same, so I'm not going to mention any of those. One thing I do actually, now that I'm thinking about it, want to point out is the Egyptian that, Mo that, I'm sorry, that Joseph is serving looks exactly like Ramesses from the Prince of Egypt in a few of those scenes. I think they probably reused some of the animation there. And if you watch some of the earlier scenes when Joseph is in good standing with him, he's wearing a wig and almost looks exactly like Moses from the Prince of Egypt. So I think that's just a, an interesting thing that the animators do, and that happens all the time with Disney movies and DreamWorks where they recycle animation just because it's cheaper and easier. But onto this scene. So we see that Joseph is being thrown in prison. Now that does happen in the Bible, but there's a little bit more to it. So in the Bible, when Joseph goes to prison, God is with him the whole time and he actually rises to be in the good graces of the prison keeper and the prison keeper puts Joseph in charge of all of the prisoners. You did nothing wrong. Mm, yeah, we know you're innocent. If we look at those two men that are laying on the rocks under the blankets, that's the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Now they're mentioned in the Bible as well. A difference here is that when Joseph is thrown in prison, the baker and the cupbearer aren't there yet. It's only later in the Bible that they offend the Pharaoh and get thrown in prison. And when they are thrown in prison, they're basically under Joseph's charge. So just a small minor difference, but when he's there, he's out of these characters, he's there by himself. They don't arrive until a little bit later on. And then another thing that I'll mention, I'm not going to show the scene here just because I don't want this video to get too long, but the chief baker does have a dream and the movie explains it in the dream that he's going to get beheaded by the Pharaoh in the Bible. It, he's not beheaded, he's actually hanged. So just a difference in death there. To be honest, I don't know why a kid's movie went for beheading over hanging. I think beheading's a little bit worse. But anyway, just a, a difference in the way that he dies. Potiphar, you trust this man? With my life, Excellency. Right here, it's pretty much the exact same as the Bible. The, the dream that the Pharaoh recounts in the movie, I think, is actually quoted directly from chapter, I believe it's 41. I think it's an exact quotation. 
But anyway, that part is exactly the same and I think it's very well done. And I just wanted to do a quick mention here. Right here when the Pharaoh makes Joseph the Tzafenoth Pneach, which is the second in command right below the Pharaoh in Genesis 41, Joseph was 33 years old and one interesting thing is Joseph was given a wife and he has two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, two very important uh, sons of Joseph and play a big role in the tribes of Israel. Now, as with the Prince of Egypt, I told you what the late dating and the early dating said the Pharaoh was. I'll do the same with, with the Joseph story. Now here, there's not really a late and an early dating for the Pharaoh. Many scholars do think that the Pharaoh right here that Joseph is talking to and discerned his dreams was Amenemes III who reigned from 1842 BC to 1797 BC. So just to, to keep in the tradition of saying the pharaohs, it's not, for the purposes of this video, it's not important to know who the pharaoh was, but if you're looking to do a more scholarly study or anything like that, it definitely is important to know who many scholars believe that the pharaoh was during this time. And it also helps when you're tracing lineages and time periods to verify time frames of the Bible. But you haven't contributed to our supply. We don't ask for charity. We'll pay you with silver. How many of you are there? There are 12 of us. 10 of us here. At home we have our father and youngest brother. Very well. Give them nothing. Ten foreigners asking for grain. No ties to Egypt. Are you thieves hoping to see where we store our grain? Spies? I don't know what you are, but I don't believe your story. Your Excellency, everything we say is true. I, I swear it. Then prove it. Produce this youngest brother. But why? What would that prove? That you're not lying. If you're telling the truth, I will let you buy all the grain you want. Until then, arrest this one. We'll hold him until you produce this youngest brother. Take him. Come on. Stop. Judah! Oh, help me! No! No! It's very this scene is goes exactly like it does in the Bible. Just one small detail that I it's very understandable why the movie didn't do it like this, but just something to know is that when Joseph is talking to his brothers here, he's using a translator just to not give away that he's able to understand them. So one thing to know, and it goes down the same way, they take Simeon and all the brothers go to find Benjamin and bring him back. Welcome. You've done what I've asked? Our brother, Benjamin. So the part that I want to mention that's a difference here, it's not really, well, I don't want to really say it's a difference, it's, it's more of an omission. So when the brothers go back to get Joseph, they're there for a while, and presumably Simeon's in prison or wherever Joseph was keeping him for that entire time. When they go back and talk to Jacob and discuss the events of what happened in Egypt, Reuben vows to keep Joseph, I'm sorry, Reuben vows to keep Benjamin safe on their travel and all of the guilt would be on him if something happens to Benjamin. Now Jacob refuses Reuben and later on Judah makes that same vow to Jacob vowing that Benjamin would come to no harm and if he is all of the guilt would be put on Judah. And because it's because Jacob didn't want to lose Benjamin because he had already lost Joseph. So that's just an omission that the, the movie doesn't have. But it's interesting to note that Reuben here still plays a, a big role in the story of Joseph, but as we see in the movie, everything goes to Judah. I 
see him. There he is. It's him. There he is. Joseph! Father. It's important to know that when the Hebrews, when all of Jacob's family are coming up to Egypt to live there, they are going to dwell in the land of Goshen. And this movie doesn't show it at all. But Jacob dies, obviously, and then later on the Bible skips to when Joseph dies, and he was 110 when he died, and he was, he was put in a coffin and embalmed in Egypt. And then later in the Prince of Egypt, when the Israelites march out of Egypt victorious, they carry Jacob's body, his bones with them to bury him in a spot that the Bible specifies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was my Is a Biblical Review of Joseph King of Dreams verdict. It is incredibly close to the biblical account. There were times when I was just trying to where I was struggling to find big things to mention. Now, I could nitpick this movie all day and do every little difference, but there's really no use in that because the movie gets the the whole picture, the all of the the morals and the themes and everything. It just does an amazing job. The music is great, the animation's really good, the story is great, and while I do like The Prince of Egypt a little bit more, this one is still amazing and it's in my opinion it is way up there with even the best of Disney's movies so I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day